to Nelco's Distribution here in Vancouver, BC. My name is Peter Mackey and today I want to bring you guys through a real life example of us wrapping a countertop as well as some doors, the inside of the kitchen doors, and just a general walkthrough of how we would approach this, pro this project right from the start all the way through to the finish. start any project there's a lot of different things that we want to look at we want to look at exactly where we're installing what the environment's going to be like what our surroundings are like and we also want to make sure that we can install on the surface that the client would like us to install on so this entails a detailed site survey we spoke about surveys in another video but this is more of a real-life scenario where I want to show you everyone a couple of things that I'll look at when I'm doing a site survey. So obviously, first and foremost, when I walk into an area, what are my surroundings like? You know, what type of floor do I have? What is there anything in the way that might impede on my install? These are all things that we have to factor when we start to quote our job. So first and foremost, on this job here, I can see I'm actually pretty lucky because I've got really clean cabinets. They don't have really any damage to them at all. Completely flat, so I can easily do a 90 degree corner cut on these. I know install is going to go relatively quickly. On the countertop, one of the things here I can see on the countertop, it's hard to see from your angle, but I do have some cleaning up that I've got to do. It's just some old silicone that I'll need to remove. And that'll come off pretty quickly, pretty easily. And I can see that there isn't any damage on the countertop at all, or really on the edges that I'll need to deal with. The other thing that I want to look at is, on the front of the countertop, how is this going to be to wrap? And I can see it's actually pretty straightforward. And I'll be able to wrap this really cleanly, really easily. And underneath, we're going to do the kick plates as well. And I want to get down and see and make sure that, yep, the kick plates, they're all actually in really good shape. One of the other things that I want to look at is how easily can I remove the doors? So with these, they actually come off just with a click on the back of each one of these hinges. So I can remove and reinstall these doors really quickly. I'm not going to have to undo any screws. One of the other things that I want to look at is, can I remove the sink? And I actually took a look underneath earlier and I undid a couple of screws. I did have some plumbing that I had to undo, but I was able to easily undo that and that means I can then lift the sink down. By, me, by being able to remove the sink, I'm going to get a really nice clean install around it because I'll actually be able to go underneath. We could then put some silicone to really prevent any water seepage. If you can't remove the sink, that's going to affect the time that it takes for you to install. So by being able to remove the sink in about 10-15 minutes and then reinstall it in 10-15 minutes, that means I'm going to have about an extra half hour of work. So these are all things that we need to take into consideration before we start measuring and determining what type of material we're using. So an important factor we want to take into consideration is the amount of material that's required for this job. This is a fairly small job, it's not going to require too much material, but one thing that I did want to note is whenever you're doing a countertop, depending on the size, you generally will end up running over half of the width of the roll. So meaning, our rolls come in 48 inches. This countertop here is 25 inches. That means we're actually going to use 48, 48 inches and so we're going to have to measure by a linear foot. We will end up with some waste, and I probably only need about 28 inches of material, which means I'm going to have almost 20 inches of leftover material, which if we were to do this job and calculate it based on square footage, our material costs are going to be really low. So this is one thing that we do need to take into consideration and we want to make sure that we do have an accurate measurement so that we don't get burned on material. The other thing that I want to look at is 
With these panels, we also have to take into consideration that for each door, we're going to need a couple inches of overlap on each door. So meaning when we measure this whole project, we want to count how many overlaps we'll have so that we can add that to our material. As well as with the width, we'll have to do the same. We will need to also measure our kick panel. And if the kick panel is all one piece, again, we're only going to have about a six inch long piece. If we have to wrap that all in one strip, if we've got a kick panel that's 12 feet long, that means we're going to have to use 12 linear feet of material at 48 inches. And this is somewhere we might be able to have a conversation with the client and let them know that we may either have an overlap or potentially a double cut. So these are some of the things that I look at when I'm measuring a project. So I just wanted to show everybody just a couple of little things that I find help me when I'm working on projects. Because one of the things you want to look at is how much time is it going to take me to disassemble something versus can I wrap around it? Can I work around it? In some cases, working around something takes more time than the quick disassembly of an item. So for instance, this drawer is empty. I've got a couple of options here. I can remove the drawer face. Obviously, I want to remove this handle because that's going to make life much, much easier. And this, it's super quick to remove. We can see that's no problem at all. And this is really going to help make our lives a lot easier. Now, with regards to removing the actual face, unless the drawers are full of items that you can't take out and you don't have that time or ability to take everything out, where in this case, we were able to remove everything in about a minute. That means I'll be able to work on this drawer flat and I can easily wrap it in this manner without removing the drawer face because removing that face has a couple of screws, it can be done easily, but I find that sometimes reinstall, you'll be realigning things, and sometimes it's hard to get everything to line back up. Now, again, with these doors, these pop off really easily, and I'll be able to wrap these doors, keeping this hardware on. It makes it a little bit trickier, but really not enough that it's worth pulling this hardware off. As mentioned earlier, I was able to get the sink undone and removed pretty quickly. So the sink we're going to want to remove and take out. Whoops. Now this is going to give me access to this front panel, which removing this front panel will give me a really nice clean wrap. I'll be able to get right into that corner. And I can see inside here that it's just two screws. So this I definitely want to remove. And with it just being two screws, it'll be pretty quick, pretty easy. And won't take too much time or effort. So with this panel removed, you can see I'll be able to easily wrap around the top I'll get a really nice clean finish and less chance of failure. So I've removed all the drawers, all of the doors, and I've got everything ready to start to install my vinyl. Before we can get started on installing any vinyl onto these, we want to start off by using an alcohol water mixture. This is just to kind of get everything all cleaned up to see what we can take off of uh, with regards to grime and things that have built up over the years. So I'm just going to quickly give everything a spray and a wipe. And then this is going to show me what I need to really concentrate on and repair. I've got a couple of things on this side as well as the bottom that I think I'll be able to actually scrape off. And then after I've given these just a, a good cleaning and then a bit of a scrape with, I've got a plastic scraper uh, just to get, and actually I do have some paint on this side of the door which I can clean off and I'll scrape off. Next, what I'm going to do is once I do have everything cleaned up and to a point that I'm happy with, what I'm going to do is I will give everything a sand with a 120 grit sandpaper. This is just going to help kind of roughen the surface because I've got to prime these entire surfaces. 
And just with a little bit of rough texture, our primer is really gonna grip. That'll give us the best life of our vinyl and the least chance of failure. <laughs> lightly sanding all of my panels and I've given them a good wipe down with my isopropyl alcohol water mixture and used a lint free cloth to get as much of that dust off as I can. So I'm about to prep the primer uh, for all of these doors. You know and we get asked how come you use primer? What does primer actually do? Basically what primer does is it really helps to promote adhesion. Specifically when you've got a surface similar to this, it's some melamine surface, which it's smooth, but it's not a glossy surface. So this surface does have a lot of kind of coarseness to it, which means the vinyl doesn't get a really, really good strong adhesion. So what we want to do is promote adhesion as best we can. And by using a primer, it really promotes adhesion. So one thing that you can do is you can test a surface. And I've done this where I've tested a surface without primer and with primer. And the difference is really, really significant. You'll be really surprised. So I think that that's a good test that uh, everybody should try and see what it's like. So I've got some primer already in here. Basically about a 50-50 mixture of water to primer. All we're gonna do with our brush, just mix everything together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll give this a good roll, get everything covered. And what we wanna do while we're rolling the primer on is we wanna make sure that we don't have any air bubbles left behind. So one little trick that I always like to do, reason for the glove, is that I'll get a lint-free cloth to basically just wipe out and essentially erase those bubbles. Because what can happen is sometimes those bubbles will stay there and can potentially be seen through the vinyl, depending on the vinyl that we're installing. And because as the primer dries, it does only take about 10-15 minutes to dry before we can apply, it may dry with that little air bubble sticking up we might see it. So we just want to make sure that we don't. So I've gone ahead and mixed this and you'll see it's a really kind of light mixture, like a watery mixture. Um, you don't want a thick consistency. You want this watery consistency because it just basically needs a really, really thin layer. And you know, we're just going to roll this on like you would if we were painting. So pretty straightforward. And you know, we just want to go ahead and roll the whole surface. And we want to roll all of the edges. We are also going to reuse an additional primer just on the edges, just to really, really promote that adhesion on all of the edges. Now, I know for you at home, it might be hard to see this, but I do have some bubbles. And so what I can do, like I said, just with a cloth, I'm just going to drag across the whole way and this is basically going to eliminate any of those bubbles and really make sure that I get primer into all of those little nooks and crannies and really get that primer spread out really nice. And this panel, you can see the primer step really doesn't take very long and this is really going to promote proper adhesion on each of the panels. I'm gonna go ahead and prime the rest of the panels and then we'll be able to start to lay some vinyl down. All right, so on this side panel, we've actually got some imperfections. You can see that this is kind of open. Um, what we're gonna do is just fill in the holes that we've got here. And all I'm gonna use is just a little bit of wood filler. The nice thing about wood filler is it dries really quickly and it's something that we can install, come back to about 15 minutes later, sand down and get a nice clean surface. So I'm just going to start by prepping these holes with some wood filler. And you'll find that with the shallow dents, you'll only need really one layer of wood filler in them. However, with some of these little bit 
deeper, whoops, with some of these deeper indentations, you'll find that you'll need a couple of passes on it. So I'll get this installed, let it dry, come back to it in about 15 minutes, fill in any additional holes that I need after I give it a little sand, and take it from there. This will just help us get a nice, clean, even smooth surface that we can then install our vinyl on and show little to no imperfections. So the next thing that I want to do on the cabinet doors is to get an additional primer put onto all of the corners and all of the edges. This is really going to promote adhesion. The reason that we do the corners as well as any edges is those are areas where we're either going to have a high stretch or we're going to be bending the material over the edges or they also might be high traffic areas. So what can happen is somebody might be able to pull that edge off. So basically we're just going to start by getting a really, really thin layer of additional primer here. And this is really, really going to promote adhesion. Again, just doing the corners. And I'm going to do all of these edges. And this really just takes a small, small amount. And then I'm also going to do the back edge as well. And again, we only need a little bit of additional primer here. And this is really going to promote that adhesion and get a good, good grip. I'm going to go ahead and prime the rest of the panels. All right, so I've got this door all primed. It's been prepped. We've sanded it. We've primed it. We put additional primer on the edges. We're ready to go. We're ready to install. The last thing I like to do is, again, just always go over with my hands and, you know, make sure that I don't have anything. Like, there's this little bump here. I just want to make sure that that's not on there because there's a chance that if you've got some small imperfections, it's going to show through into the material when you're installing. And I want to make sure that my primer is dry and ready to go. So I've got this piece of material that I'll be using. It's actually this one here. So I've pre-cut it down to size, giving myself a couple of inches on, on either edge so that I've got enough to stretch over these corners. So I've got my material all lined up for where I want to install. I've got a couple of inches on either edge and an inch overlap on these edges. And basically what I'm going to do is start by folding back this material. And I'm going to take my Snitty, my line release tool, and I'm going to cut back a few inches of paper. And I'm going to bring this over. And I've got this lined up, so I can then just simply release that side of the liner, squeegee down, and again, I always want to make sure that I'm overlapping my squeegee strokes. I can bring the other side up and over. This gives me a chance, I've actually got a little bit of dust here that I'm going to remove. And again, Overlapping squeegee strokes with a lot of pressure. Just working my way down this panel. And now I'm at the point where I can start to release my paper liner and keep going across. And again, constantly overlapping my squeegee strokes. I've got everything squeegeed down. I always like to go over all of my edges, make sure that everything's down. And now I can start on my corners. So now I'm going to start to stretch my corners. And what I want to do is evenly heat, probably about three inches into either side, just with my heat gun. And as you start to heat it up, you're really going to be able to feel that the material is starting to stretch. We don't want to stretch this like crazy, but we do need to stretch our material in place. So what I'll do is, with both hands, I'm going to let the material cool off just a little bit and as I start to pull, I bring everything over evenly. We don't want to stretch too much because we don't want to distort the pattern on our material. 
I then like to do a little bit of a poke in here. And what this does is it just takes away any of the wrinkles on these edges. So I press this down and then we're ready to work on the next corner. Okay, so I'm gonna get started on this second corner and I still haven't joined and kind of brought the material over the edge to connect everything. But I'm gonna get started on this corner to stretch everything over. Again, just slightest amount of stretch. I don't wanna stretch it too, too much because we don't wanna distort the pattern of the material too much. Again, with that pinch, got that in place. Now I can just come over with my thumb, pinch that down. And what I wanna show you is that I haven't brought this edge down just yet. Reason being is I am gonna work these corners with just a touch of heat. But first I'm actually gonna press this edge down just a little bit so that it starts to come over, but I'm not gonna apply it just yet. So I'm gonna give this a little touch of heat, kind of release that a bit. And then I can bend this down and you can see now I've got a really nice even surface that I'll be able to come right across. And again here, I just a little touch of heat. I just wanna release this a bit. And again, I'll be able to now easily work this across just by pulling down, come over with my squeegee, and just work that out. So now I've got this full side done. I can come in, and I'm gonna trim this and work from the middle here out onto either side. And I've got my knife just running along the inside corner of this door, right to the edge. Now I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And again, I've got the knife just running on the inside of the door on a bit of an angle so that I've got a really nice smooth edge here. Top, we need basically my measurement was 60 inches by 26 inches so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add a few inches to either side so I'm gonna go 66 by 32 so that this way I'm gonna have some extra material so I don't need to worry about running out of material and with this being flat full color if I were to run on a bit of an angle, you know, that'll just give me a little bit of play so that I can ensure that for sure I get full coverage. So, I'm gonna cut this down. And again, we wanna go 66 long. The nice thing about this material is we've got great lines here that we can measure off of. I'm going to come to this line here, cut straight across, and then I'll come back across here. Oops. So I've got my 66, and I'm just going to go to 32, which is basically right here on this line. And I will have some extra material left over, and this is Part of the process of when we are determining how much material we need, that we include that in our wastage. So I'm ready to get started on laying down this material for the countertop. I've got everything all lined up. I've basically already pre-trimmed my release liner. So I can pull this off, get ready to start applying this material.
All right, now that I've got this tack down, what I'm actually going to do is roll everything up. And then start with my release paper, pulling it from the back here. I'm actually gonna be able to use this essentially as a guide as I'm laying down this longer section. I'll show you what I mean by a guide. This paper that's bent is going to keep our material off of the countertop. So I've got this all rolled out. And as you can see, this is elevated. This is gonna allow me to really easily start to squeegee. I'm just gonna to start to work this paper back and again, always overlapping my squeegee strokes with really, really good hard squeegee strokes, overlapping each one of them back and forth. And you can see that by having this release liner in behind, I'm able to work this really quickly and easily. I use this technique also when I'm doing doors, I've used it on restaurant tables, anything where you've got a little bit longer piece of material, this is a great way to be able to work a big piece of material on your own. Now you can see I've reached kind of like a bit of a critical junction where I'm starting to work my way around the sink opening. I don't really want to go too far on one side. I want to make sure that I continue both sides. And really, the tricky part is coming up for when I get to the other side of the sink. So I don't want to get too, too far ahead of myself because I can easily have this wrinkle on me, which is not what we want to have happen at this point. But I'm continually, continually squeegeeing along the way here. Now, I'm going to pull this last bit of release liner up and off. And I'm pulling with a bit of pressure to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles on this side of my sink. So again, overlapping squeegee strokes right to the edge. So I've come and I've squeegeed the whole way along. I've got around my sink. I don't have any wrinkles. Now what I want to do is work and stretch the two corners. And then I'm going to squeegee in and fill this front edge. And this edge is a little tricky in that there's a bit of a wave in it. So we're gonna have to work this along and get this over. But again, I'm gonna start by stretching these two corners and then I can work my way along. So again, we wanna just warm up about three, four inches around either side. We're gonna use the same technique as what we used on the doors. So I'm here at the corner and essentially what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start by doing a cut line down across here. I can then wrap this underneath. This will then wrap over top of that. And I just got to finish working out a couple of uh, little bit of stretching spots here on this edge. And then what I can do is start to work along this side. I just want to get this all into place and set up first. Got this all stretched into place, nicely lined up. And again, I'm just gonna go right off the corner here so that I can get this stretched underneath. And so then we can really make sure that we get good coverage, good adhesion. And 
stretched under. And we wanna make sure we get this tucked right in the whole way so that we get a nice clean finish. So again, I'm just gonna work my way across. And continue to work out any wrinkles that we've got here. Here, I'm just going to trim this back about a half an inch. Peel off my excess. Clean this up. That's going to give me the chance here to reheat this, get some of these wrinkles out and then start to pull this edge over. And I'll be able to work that across. And then once I've got this tucked in underneath, I'll be able to trim and clean it all up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the hole for the sink as well as the three holes for the faucet. Uh, basically what we wanna do is start on one side, come in on a 45, Slowly just work our way around. And this is, a, this is part of the process that you can easily have your knife jump up. You don't want to go too quickly because this isn't the smoothest edge. It could cause our knife to jump. All right. We've got that piece. And now I've got the three holes. And again, on a 45, these ones are a little tougher. But just work your knife around. Try and get them out as cleanly as possible without having your knife jump onto the surface. And again, 45. Work your way around. That one actually went really smooth. This one, not so smooth. And again, this is the problem with these rougher edges. So you really gotta be careful. Okay, so that is ready. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to start laying down this side piece. I've already primed this, we've prepped it, it's good to go. And I've got my piece of vinyl all set up and I've got some overlap around the front which I'll be able to wrap to this corner, trim on this side for our front piece, and I'll trim along here. And basically then I'll just trim along the back. What I've done is I've actually pre-cut a one inch strip out from the back of my material. Now I'll be able to line this up basically right against the wall because I do have enough material and a bit of a gap against the wall on the back that I'll be able to just go straight up against this. So I'm going to lock this in place. I'm going to get started by just installing the top piece. Again, as always, as I always mention, overlapping squeegee strokes, a lot of pressure, just working my way up. And then I'm going to be able to just tuck everything in underneath and trim that off shortly. Down at the bottom, basically what I'm gonna do is, I've got this, because I've got a separate piece, I actually have another piece of material that I'll be installing across the bottom because I do have this little bit of a gap. So if you're wondering why I didn't go the whole way down, it's because of this gap that I'm gonna trim along. And I've actually got a piece that's gonna fit there perfectly. I'm going to keep working my way down. I'll just keep coming along, overlapping squeegee strokes. And again, just 
keep working this down. Okay. Down here, I'm going to start off by doing just pulling this top piece just slightly down and really tucking this corner. This will then allow me to work my way across. I'm going to get this cut started. I'm just running my knife inside, there's an edge there that I'm able to work cross. So now what I can start to do is to work my way across to the front here. First, I want to get this piece trimmed out and I essentially want to run my knife along the inside of this line. So again, just coming along with my finger, holding this edge over to the front here, squeezing up, tucking into the top, and I'm going to trim this side. And up here it's a little bit tricky. But essentially, we just want to get our knife into this groove. I'm going to bring this over. And again, as always, my knife is on a 45 on that inside edge. That's our edge piece finished. All right, so basically what we want to do now is to install some strips of material onto these pieces here, because when you open up your cabinet doors, these will be exposed. So we want to make sure that all of these match the existing color of the cabinet doors. So what I was able to do was with some leftover pieces that I had from what I cut earlier, I just cut some one inch thick strips. And all I'm going to do the nice part about this is I can actually have a little bit of overlap on this because that's going to be covered with a permanent panel. So this piece I'll be able to start right up on the edge here. I'm going to butt it right up against and then I'm just going to line it up with the top and work my way across because this is a really nice straight edge of material on here. I'm going to work my way over. Pressing that down in place. Come back with my squeegee. Tuck that in. And I'm going to cut again just on this line here. Let my knife fall into there. I've got that one done. And I'll continue on these remaining one, two, three pieces. Thanks for checking out our video on wrapping countertops as well as covered doors. 
I hope that everybody found a couple of uh, tips, a couple tricks, and uh, hopefully it was helpful and informative for you. Don't forget to make any comments. Let me know if, we ha if you have any questions. Be more than happy to answer them. Also, let us know if you have any topics for future videos that you'd like us to look at, or if you'd like us to get into more depth on a certain thing that you saw in this last video. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Facebook and Instagram. As well, like this video and hit the little alert button at the bottom so that you can see when we're posting future videos. And you'll get an alert showing that you've got another video coming out for us. Look forward to hearing from everybody and hope to see you guys again soon.